I'm Michael Elliott, and our next guest is Michael Goodman, Director of Digital Media Strategies at Strategy Analytics. Welcome, Michael. Could you please, for our audience, describe a little bit about yourself and uh, a little bit about Strategy Analytics? Certainly, Michael. Thank you for having me. Strategy Analytics is a research and consulting firm focused on the digital consumer. I'm responsible for running the digital media practice there, where we help companies navigate the distribution, consumption, and monetization of media entertainment. That's games, music, um, movies, television, et cetera, as a result of the growth of broadband, fixed and mobile, and, inter and internet connected devices. So one of the major points of emphasis at the Consumer Electronics Show are really the, the consumer electronic manufacturers unveiling their televisions and their new televisions for the upcoming year. But aren't consumers really millennials not watching TV? Yeah, I think that, that that's a, a, a something we hear and we read about in the press an awful lot these days that people are watching television, oh, they're cord cutting. And when you're at a show like the Consumer Electronics Show where it's all about new technology, new televisions, you ask yourself the question, well, do, if this is really true and going on, do they need televisions? And the answer is really absolutely yes. Because the reality is, is that people are not viewing less television. It really comes down to how you define what television viewing is. Um, oftentimes when we talk about what television, they're really people are talking about linear television. That's the stuff we get from cable and satellite. Mm -hmm. and, and there is some decline in viewing to linear television. If we look at Nielsen, who does the TV ratings, um, they said television viewing declined about 4% last year. But really, television viewing today is about much more than just what we're seeing on that big screen TV in our living room. It's about watching it on your mobile devices. It's about watching it on your tablets as well. And so what we've created is, is two things. One is I like to call it the democratization of television. And that's we have all of these choices of where we get it from. So it's not just our cable providers, mm -hmm. not just Comcast or Verizon, who we get our video from, but we also get it from Netflix, we get it from Hulu, we get it from YouTube. We have all these different ways of getting television, and simultaneously, we also have different um, devices, and this is sort of the personalization of television that, I don't know about your household, but on my household on Sunday afternoons, I'm watching that football game. You know, a few years ago, when my daughters walk into the room, they just kind of shake their head and walk out. <laughs> um, whereas now, they pick up their tablet, they pick up their laptop, and they can go ahead and watch television. So we've created this personalized viewing, and this, in turn, has actually led to increased television viewing rather than less television viewing. So it's increased, but it's really altered the way we consume oh, television absolutely. content. Okay. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fair is, is how we consume. And that's why I, I, li I like this term. This, I think this description of calling it the democratization of television is really a fair term because it's the, the power has moved from the service provider from your cable operator to say, here's how you're going to get your television. You know, it, it's the old Henry Ford, the Model T, you can have every color you want your car as long as, as, long as it's black. black. Right. Well, you can have, have any channel you want as long as it's on my system and on these televisions. Well, fast forward today and, you know, I can get a, the sh pretty much the shows wherever I want, on whatever device, wherever I am. I mean, to me, that's sort of, that's the democratization of television. So how are these multi-channel providers going to survive and thrive going forward? Sure. I mean, I think a big part of it is, is they, have to ch they, they have to change their business models as well. And we are seeing that is if you think about this, this TV everywhere is the big where um, service providers are going. And that is a good um, conceptualization, the problem is in the, is in the execution of it. Um, that it's still clunky, it doesn't work particularly well, um, some devices are supported, some devices aren't, um, authentication works, sometimes it doesn't work, and there's still a lot of rules that um, whether I can and can't use it. Um, and the bigger picture is, is it's not integrated into my bigger experience. So you sort of have right now, television viewing is very balkanized. So I have Netflix over here, and that's all I have all my Netflix viewing over here. I have my Comcast and TV everywhere over here. I've got Hulu over here, and I don't, you know, and none of them ever talk to each other, and it's a very dispersed experience from the consumer. It's hard for me to figure out who has what, and I wind up paying more for things that I don't have to. Um, and, and so there's a lot of work that still needs to be done to make this a lot more seamlessly. But I think there's absolutely a role for them. Um, and what makes them have the biggest role is actually is a business model perspective. 
if we think about it, is there's a saying in the industry, content is king. And right. I think that is absolutely, that's one of the, the most universal truisms there are in the industry. And why that's relevant here is because what we're seeing in the television industry is a business model that's evolving out of the movie industry, and that's the concept of windowing, that you have access to, the, to this content for a certain period of time, and you have essentially exclusive access, and then it moves into another window and somebody else has access, and, and moves into another window and somebody else has access. And the point that's relevant about this and what's so important is that's how you maximize your revenue, by controlling who gets access to what and where. So you'll notice that um, television series may be available on Netflix, but they don't become available on Netflix until after they have aired, their season has aired on the broadcast network. And it's this way they're protecting the, the revenue that's coming from the linear side of the business before they start to maximize the revenue that's coming from the subscription side of the business. So is that really then the model that's going to work going forward? Yeah, I think that's the model we're definitely going to see is a, is even more so of the strengthening of this windowing of content in the television industry in order to maximize your revenues. So is that true just in the U.S. or across all regions? Yeah, no, I think that that happens across all regions. Um, windows vary by region. One of the things I think is more interesting is not as a, is how you make your money off of the business models off of different regions, because different regions consume um, content differently. Mm -hmm. So if you go to you know, the U.S., um, so actually, I'll take a step back and say, there are essentially four different ways you make money off of your content. Okay. You make it through advertising, you make it through electronic sell-through, which is just basically direct sales, mm -hmm. um, you make it through rental, and you make it through subscription. So basically four business models. One, I'll call it advertising, which is an indirect revenue stream, and three, that come consumer spend that come right out of my pocket. When you go to different regions, how these models fit together varies. So in the U.S., we tend to be, um, in the video industry, tends to be much more consumer spend oriented um, with a heavy emphasis on subscription video. So that would be our predominant model moving forward in the home video industry. Versus if you go to some place like France, the model is much, much more reliant on advertising revenues. So you have to have flexibility in how you apply your business models mm -hmm. so that it's not one model fits all everywhere you go. It's going to be very different whether you're in Western Europe or even more specifically when you're in France or Germany or Norway or the UK versus the US versus Japan versus India. You have to have the flexibility um, in your business models to meet the needs of the consumer in those regions. All right, final question. Since we're at the Consumer Electronics Show, what have you seen or observed that you feel really is going to impact how we consume, how we watch TV in the future. Yeah, I, you know, this is something I've been thinking about for some time, but CES has, has really solidified my thoughts on this, and that's going to be the importance of um, search, personalization, um, discovery, and curation. If you think about it today, as I mentioned earlier, it's sort of balkanized. You've got you've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got your service provider, you've got VOD, you've got SVD, you've got all these different ways that you can get it. Um, and you know, just to, to give you a little story to, to, to show the importance of this is, is that um, a colleague of mine wanted to introduce his son to the Karate Kid, grade eight, 1980s mm -hmm. movies, you know. Ralph, and Ralph Macchio, Ralph yeah, Macchio. absolutely. And he started looking around, it's like, oh, I want to show it to him. And he couldn't, couldn't find it anywhere. So he looked on Hulu, Netflix, all over the place. It's not, it wasn't being offered. And finally, he found it on um, iTunes um, for, as a sell-through, and he paid $14 and purchased it, and there he had it. And not three days later, while he was surfing around on his cable system, he found it for free. Yeah. Um, very frustrating that you end up having to pay $14 when you didn't need to. Right. Um, and that's just because we have this balkanized approach. So this idea of search and discovery is going to be absolutely critical as consumers start to ar arbitrage how they find their content. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and the second part of it is is unlocking the value of your libraries. You know, Netflix has probably like you know over twenty thousand titles there. And if you ever if I ever think about you know your scroll bars there mm -hmm. of what you know maybe less than a tenth of a percent is what I'm ever being exposed to. I'm sure that there is tons of content out there that I would be. Um, very interested in watching. There's movies out there, TV series that I have no idea that's on Netflix, but I would be very interested in watching. And in today's algorithms right now, don't bring that to okay. me. 
So I think that that search discovery recommendation and curation are going to be very important from a consumer's perspective in um, giving them a better experience and from a provider's perspective in unlocking the value of their content. Excellent. Well, thank you, Michael, for joining us today. We greatly appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.